Tena Koju Katoa. This is Marge Lehmann of Starboard Maritime Intelligence. This is a special screencast investigating the fishing behavior in the Tasman Sea with respect to marine biology and oceanography. In this episode, it will also become clear why we call this Operation 18C. I hope you enjoy it and please get in touch with any comments or questions. At Starboard, we spend a lot of time interpreting the movements of vessels and attempt to associate them with possible activities that they might be engaged in, identifying fishing and encounters between two vessels at sea are two examples, but we would like to go deeper and understand patterns of behavior in order to make predictions about what might happen in the future. And the behavior of fishing boats is a great case study as it is determined much by natural forces like weather and sea state and ocean productivity. Or as a friend of mine once said, if you're fishing at sea, the ocean is king. The boats we are observing in Operation 18C are longliners fishing for southern bluefin tuna. Southern bluefin tuna are remarkable fish. They are one of the great global migratory species of the open ocean and are found throughout the southern hemisphere. Individuals of over 200 kg in weight and over 40 years in age have been caught. They can maintain fast swimming speeds and dive below 500 meters deep. They feed on small fish, crustaceans and squid and they hunt these primarily by sight. And this is where it gets interesting and relevant for fishery. The, play, the prey the tuna hunt move up and down in the water column on a daily basis. They spend the day in the deep dark ocean below 200 meters and migrate up at dusk to feed on algae growing in the sunlit surface zone, the epipelagic. They do that to avoid being hunted by just the type of visual predator we are talking about. So southern bluefin tuna feed primarily in the mornings and evenings when there is light to see and prey is still in the epipelagic to be seen. And fishers have to set their lines at this time and at the right depth to match this feeding behavior. But tuna food is not equally abundant everywhere. This map shows the biomass of phytoplankton during April this year. Phytoplankton are microscopic algae that are the base of the food chain of the open ocean. Tuna don't eat phytoplankton, but of course their prey depends on it, just like herbivores depend on grass on land. I added the tracks of the fishing vessels in the Tasman from the first 10 days of May to this map. And you can see how the Japanese fleet down in the south fishes the edge of the highly productive ocean area known as the subtropical frontal zone. The subtropical front separates the southern ocean from the Tasman Sea. At the ocean surface it can be found as an area of rapid temperature changes from north to south as indicated in this cross-section of the ocean from the southern ocean through to the Tasman Sea. The subtropical front is marked at the top of the graphic and the extent of our OP18C area from north to south is shown with a dashed rectangle. And as a first approximation, many fissures in the Tasman use the temperature of 18 degrees C to find the location of this front in the ocean. And that's why we incorporated sea surface temperature into starboard to be able to interpret the behavior of ships at sea with respect to local oceanographic conditions. Denise Rivera, one of Starboard's genius software engineers, has worked very hard to make this feature awesome. It updates daily from the analysis data set produced by the US Naval Oceanographic Office. The temperature at the location of the mouse pointer is displayed near the top of the map, just under the lat long position. And all this data loads really fast as the resolution is zoom dependent. Now the Japanese fleet is greatest in numbers year over year in this area and it returns on an annual basis. To make it easier to visualize their activity I will select all the ships and then go back in time to this time last year into 2020 and we can see that these ships appear to be seeking out the subtropical front year after year.
However, it is a bit difficult to compare patterns between years in starboard at this point and in addition experts might want to use other data layers or conduct specialized analyses. To facilitate this, subscribers can download the tracks of the selected vessels as a CSV or KML file. I've done this to look at the fishing locations over the three years in more detail. I downloaded the tracks in our area from May the 2nd to May the 9th each year and plotted them on top of a temperature map with a bit better resolution than in starboard and a color scale adjusted to show the temperature range between 10 and 25 degrees C. I also inserted contours of equal temperature or isothermals. You can see that the Japanese fishing activity happens south of 18 degrees C and north of the 15 degrees C isothermal. The chlorophyll map confirms that the ships trace nicely the edge of green, more productive water and the blue water of the Tasman. The situation in 2021 was very similar. Closer inspection shows that the 18 degrees C isothermal was a bit further north than this year. And 2020 looked more like 21 than this year, but details are again hard to see in these separate plots. So I have superimposed all three years tracks in one figure and added the respective 18 degrees C contour. This is a busy plot, but it shows that the 18 degrees C isothermal moved progressively south from 2020 to 2022, and the Japanese tuna vessels have also fished further south each year. The warmer temperatures are consistent with data that show that 2022 is a La Nina year, which is characterized by warmer than normal surface ocean temperatures in the western Pacific. I hope to have shown that the ability to inspect vessel tracks in the context of oceanographic and meteorological conditions is very useful as it allows us to better understand the activities at sea and to make informed predictions about what might happen. Tena Kotu for watching. I hope you found this oceanography special of our Operation 18C informative. Please get in touch with us if you have any questions or comments and follow us on Twitter and LinkedIn for updates.